This is an introduction to the application XAir Edit, uh, which you can download from Behringer.com, uh, either for PC or Mac. It allows you to control a Behringer XAir uh, mixer. Uh, we're looking here at the setup for a, a, an XR18. Uh, it's not plugged into the device, so this is the offline mode, but you can still uh, get used to uh, how everything works working in offline mode. So you can download the app from Behringer and get used to it and then be all set uh, to go for the real thing. Looking at the layout here, uh, you can see that there are a number of broad areas here. Uh, in the top left corner, we've got all of our tabs uh, to look at different ways in which you can view uh, the settings. Down in the bottom left here, we've got our sliders, and those allow you to change the values uh, for things uh, like volume or uh, the amount of signal going to a bus or to an effect. In the top right corner, we've got uh, all of our settings. So you can go into setup and make changes there or save or load things. And then in the bottom right corner, we've got uh, where you can select what it is that you're controlling. And we'll get more into that in just a minute. So let's go through all of the tabs that we have here across the top. We start with Mixer, which gives you a view of all of the signals uh, that are going out from a particular channel. So here we've got channel one. And this image here represents the, uh, the pan left and right for that channel. This represents the compression. This represents the EQ. This rep represents the noise gate. And then each of these represent the uh, sends going to either uh, one of the, the, the six buses or one of the four effects channels. And then at the top, you've got the input settings and the overall level. So if I come here and I mouse over uh, one of these and move my scroll wheel up and down, you're going to see that the amount of send going to a particular bus goes up or down. If I move the slider up and down, then the amount of uh, signal going uh, to the main left right uh, is going to change. And if I come up here, I can adjust the amount of gain and say that I want uh, a unity gain zero instead of negative 12, which it started at. So you can make uh, any of those changes here, uh, and you can adjust these uh, in a number of different ways. So I'm using the scroll wheel to change my gain up and down, or I can click and drag in the box and drag to the right to increase and the left to decrease. So any of these, I can click on them and drag to the right, and it's going to increase. And once I've got it up, I can drag to the left to have it go back down again. So you see I've got my 16 main channels here plus the uh, stereo line in channel. And so I've got all my channels right here. Now, let's say we want to have a different view. We want channel one looking at the inputs. So here I can do things like say whether I want phantom power, whether I want the polarity to be, to be reversed, whether I want to link the stereo channel with the, ch the channel next to it. I can see details of my noise gate, my equalizer, the compressor, all of my sends, all of my effects. Uh, and then main out going to left, right, or not. Uh, the uh, uh, pan left and right, auto mix, DCA groups, and mute groups. We're going to be talking more about what mute groups are uh, in a few minutes. Input uh, looks at uh, a more detailed look at the input settings. So here we've got a bit about gain, uh, USB trim. If you're uh, plugging into the USB uh, to a computer and sending it to a DAW, how much of that comes back, uh, and whether or not uh, we're uh, using USB or uh, straight from the micro line. So if you first want to send the signal into a computer, process it in the computer, and then send it to the output, you're going to put that on USB. If you want to come, it to come straight from the line, then you're going to put it on mic line. Next, we've got our noise gate. This is a way for you to uh, limit low sounds. So essentially, you're, if, if the sound isn't high enough to get over a particular threshold, there's going to be no sound coming through the, sig through the signal. So if I've got a little bit of hiss on the channel, then I just raise the threshold and suddenly the hiss isn't tall enough to step over that gate and everything else is. It's like you're, if you're in the kitchen and you've got a pet in the kitchen and you don't want the pet to come into the dining room, you put a low gate uh, between the two rooms and then the pet can't get over the gate, but people can. Or if you want that gate to be a little bit higher, the pet can't get through and kids can't get through, but adults can. So the higher you raise that threshold, 
the fewer things can get past that doorway. Then there's other controls, uh, and I'm not going to go into the details of that here. Equalization is a way to reshape the sound, so you can use these to make particular uh, parts of the spectrum more or less prominent, and so you can uh, use these to affect how the sound is shaped. Then we've got compression, and instead of uh, limiting the bottom end, compression is going to allow it to, us to limit the top end. And the, the most uh, loud sounds now are going to be pressed down to be a lower volume. So what we're looking at here is uh, whenever there's a really loud sound like a pop or uh, a snare hit, uh, instead of that being really, really loud and blowing up the speakers, that is going to be a more moderate sound. So the sound is still going to come through, but it limits how loud any sound on the channel can get. And that can be very pleasant uh, in terms of the difference that it has for the sound. Then we come into a more detailed look at the sends. And so here we've got uh, our six buses, which you might use to go to a monitor or something like that. And so for channel one, I can say that I want this, this much to go to the monitor channel one, this much to go to monitor channel two, this much to go to the hearing assist system, and this much to go to the recording. So you can set for each individual channel uh, how much goes to each of those places uh, other than the main left right. Furthermore, you can choose whether you want for that sound to come directly from the input, whether you want it to pass through some signal processing but not go through the EQ, after the EQ, before the fader, or after the fader, or after the subgroup. So each of these allows you to select where in the signal chain you want the sound to come from. And for some uh, channels, you might want a very raw sound. For some, you might want for the EQ to be uh, in the mix. And for others, you might want not only for the EQ to affect it, but also for the slider uh, to affect what happens to that, ch to that channel sound. Then over here, we've got our effects. So uh, I can say that I want effect number one to be a little bit in, uh, a little bit less of effect two, and a whole lot of effect four. We're going to get more into effects in just a second. So for each channel, you can select how much of these things you want. Now we have our main tab, uh, and we've got main left right, and a lot of these things you, you'll notice uh, are available on multiple tabs. So different tabs have a different focus, but a lot of these controls are available in multiple places. So I can pan 100% uh, either way or just a little bit, uh, and I can select my DCA group. A DCA group is a way of controlling a number of different channels together, and so you can control the sound of particular channels as a group. So you might want to select all of the instruments. You might select all of the vocalists and put each of those two groups into their own DCA group, and then you can raise or lower that group as a whole. Furthermore, you can add uh, different channels to a mute group, and that mute group is going to allow you to mute multiple channels at once. So here I click on the mute group control down here, and you can see that the first four channels are all being muted at the same time as I select or deselect that. Uh, so you can have two different mute groups here of channels 1 through 4 and 5 through 8, and you can very quickly uh, decide which are going to be muted and which are going to be live. And then we've got auto mix, and auto mix is a way to have multiple microphones live at the same time and have the computer decide which one is currently being used and mute all of the others. So if you've got a, a, a panel discussion and you've got four or five people who are all up front and any one of them might talk at any one time, but you don't want uh, very much sound to come through from those who aren't speaking directly into the mic, auto mix is a way to select who's going to be who. Then we've got our effects and we've got four effects set here. Uh, you can change which type of effect you want. So let's go with a stereo de uh, And so this is a different way that you can uh, modify the sound and using the effect sends you can control for each channel how much uh, of that signal goes to which particular effect. Then finally we've got our meter and you don't see anything here right now because there's no sound going through the system because we're not actually connected to the soundboard but if there was uh, an analog input coming through one of the one of the 18 channels here you would see something going on here 
you would see how much uh, it, signal is going through the effect sends, through the effects returns, through the six uh, bus outputs, through the USB returns, and personal monitoring system, which is sold separately. So looking at this one page, you can see very quickly where the sound is. And so if you've got sound coming through, but you don't know where it's coming from, go to the meter page and you'll be able to see very quickly that, oh, channel 11 is where I've got a problem, so I need to bring that down. And so those are all the tabs that you can use uh, to control the sound. Coming back here to the mixer, uh, the, the mixer uh, tab, you can see that we've changed a few things and that's reflected here in the mixer tab. And so I've got uh, a little bit of uh, bus number three, uh, some effects, uh, some uh, compression, and some EQ going on on channel one. And I can click on any of these to go uh, directly to uh, what it's looking at. So if I want to change the compression on the uh, mixer view, I can just click on compression and there I am. If I want to change the EQ, I click on EQ and there I am. If I want to change the noise gate, I click on noise gate and there I am. So very quickly and easily, you can move your way around. Next, we're going to look at our sliders here. Now looking at our sliders, uh, there are a number of pieces of information packed into a very tight space here. First of all, we've got our scribble strip, which if I right click on, I can change uh, the name of the instrument to base, not nace, and change the color of it. So if I can have uh, the green base tab on here, it's very easy to see it. I can select whether or not I want that to be soloed. So if I solo it, nothing else will come through my headphones, only that particular channel. And so I can select multiple channels to solo or hit the clear solo button to clear those off or deselect them to clear them. Next, I've got uh, the uh, control for uh, direct input on the uh, channel slider. So if I want it to be right at zero at unity gain, then I can just enter zero. If I want it to be five, I can bump it up uh, just by typing five and hitting enter. Uh, or if I want it back down, uh, I can just slide it all the way to the bottom. Then we've got uh, which DCA channel uh, and which auto mix channel this particular channel is assigned to. So you see here one, 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 one. I've got my first four channels all assigned to DCA group one. We're gonna be looking more at what those do in a few minutes. I've also got all those four channels uh, assigned to uh, auto mix group X. Now we've got our slider, move that up and down, and then we've got four buttons along the bottom here which control which mute group this particular channel is in. So if I use the mute groups, I can mute multiple channels at the same time. And because the first of the four boxes is checked on the first four channels, all those first four channels are in the first mute group. And then we've got the channel number down at the bottom. Now we're gonna look at the controls in the bottom right corner. And right now we've got main left right selected. Main left right are the main speakers, uh, what comes out that everybody in the room can hear. And so I've got a slider here to control the master of the main left right. And I can override that by typing a number here. I can solo the main left right, uh, and I can pan it left and right. I can control uh, compression on it, uh, and I can adjust its EQ. The EQ on this has uh, better controls than what you've got on the, uh, the individual channels. We've got a six band parametric EQ, uh, a graphic equalizer where you can adjust uh, the, the, the controls uh, using sliders, and then a TEQ, a true EQ, which is the same thing as a graphic EQ, but tweaked so that the curves that it produces are smoother. With a graphic EQ, uh, if you move two channels down that are side by side, you can get some unexpected effects uh, because one channel might affect the other one. With a TEQ, it smooths out some of those uh, discrepancies so that you can get a very even curve similar to what you'd get in a, uh, a parametric EQ, but with a graphical user interface. So coming back over here, uh, we're going to take a look at the other ways in which you can uh, make adjustments. So first of all, we're going to select our DCA group. So DCA1 is selected, and so you'll notice here that I no longer have control of the compression and EQ. Uh, I, I only have a view of the main slider for the DCA group. And so if I lower this, then the sound is going to decrease 
for all of the channels that I've got in the DCA1 group. And so my first four channels will all lower in volume together if I draw down the DCA1 slider. This means that, you know, if, if all of the vocals are a little bit soft, then I can just come to DCA1 and bump them all up a little bit together without having to go into each individual channel and make adjustments separately, which might take 30 seconds. In one quick move, I can raise or lower all of those sounds together. And again, I can override that by typing into this box. Next, uh, we've got our uh, buses. So if I click on bus one, you'll notice that over here, everything has gone yellow. That's because I'm controlling bus one. And again, I've got equalizer and I've got compression for this as well as pan. But for bus one, I now have control using the sliders for each individual channel. So if I come back to the mixer view, you can see that suddenly I'm getting mixer uh, uh, signal in each of those channels on bus one. So I can go to bus two and again control uh, for bus two where all the signal goes uh, and then the same thing for effect. So if I want to add some effect to a particular channel from a particular effect I can come here and mix all of the channels at the same time and decide where I want all of those effect signals to grow to go. And then at the bottom I've got my mute groups and so I can click mute, mute, and I've got the first eight channels muted in two quick clicks. So if uh, the band is coming back up and the worship leader wants to say something, uh, you can quickly unmute all of the audio mics uh, and be able to uh, have that person be heard while keeping the instruments muted so that uh, when someone's picking up their instrument and maybe drops it or... or touches the strings it's not going to come through the mains and then when they're ready to actually start playing just click that and everything is unmuted very handy to have those mute groups and it makes sense to combine the dca groups and the mute groups so that the same group that i've got control over with this slider is the same group that i've got control over with those mutes and that way you can very quickly and easily uh, have a look at what's going on there Now finally we've got the top right corner where we've got a number of the settings that we can have. So using this I can quickly resize uh, this view that I've got here to fit whatever window that I'm in. So if I'm in uh, a very large screen I can hit ultra, if I'm in a smaller screen like what I've got here I can hit standard and change the size of my view here. I can also uh, go into the setup and change the access point or the wireless LAN settings in order to be able to connect uh, to the Wi-Fi in a place, you have to put in the SSID and the appropriate uh, uh, security password. If you don't get that right, you're going to have real problems. And then local area network uh, for when you're plugging in a direct cable. Audio and MIDI, uh, monitor, and GUI preferences. Then you can control uh, your ins and outs. Ordinarily, you wouldn't uh, do too much uh, with this. But you can control uh, where your sends go and uh, make sure that everything is exactly as you want it to be. We've got some utilities uh, to, to look at uh, how, how to, to do those. We'll, we'll probably have another video. You can save and load information. So I can save a scene or I can save a channel preset. So the very first time that I set up a channel for somebody, I might take some time to adjust their equalization, adjust the compression, adjust the noise gate, and set all that up then I can save all that information so that next time they come to, uh, to, to, to play with the group, I've got all their information preset and I can just load them into whatever situation I'm in. Then you can save everything that's happening here as a scene. And so you can uh, save all that information uh, and so that later on you can come back to it simply loading it back in. So when you've got two different churches that meet in one building, each one can have their practice, set everything up for their practice, save all that information, and then just reload it on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, and all their information is going to be right there. So the work that you do during the rehearsal, you can simply recall it on Sunday morning. Then to load that, you're going to load either a scene or a channel preset. Let's say that I've uh, adjusted my channel 1 here, and I want to copy it. Now you see the paste is lit up, so I can select channel 2, and I'm going to say paste and I can choose uh, which information that I want. So let's say I want the EQ and the compression settings to paste to channel two. Now you see here that we've got all that information 
paste it over to channel two. But let's say that I want all that information to go, I paste, and you'll see that everything, including the inputs and the, uh, the sends, have all adjusted to be the same as what it is on channel one, including the scribble strip. So maybe I say that wants to be uh, guitar instead of bass, uh, and then I can further go in and, and make some changes to the EQ to make it exactly what I want. But if I've got it close already on the other channel, I can copy and paste what I want over to the second channel. So there you have a very brief overview about how everything is laid out. There's still lots of information to go into about how all of this is used, but that will be for further videos.